John chapter 15, John chapter 15, starting from verse 13. He said, greater love hath no man than this, than a man to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. Jesus was speaking. He said, you are my friends. That's in verse 14. If you do whatsoever I command you, I am a friend of God, and God is speaking, Jesus, you are my friends. So it's a mutual relationship. Yes, I am a friend of God. He's also saying, you are my friend. If you do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I've called you friends. For all things that I've heard of my Father, I've made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you, that you may go and, and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit will remain. That whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give unto you. That song that we sang, I just want us to take a moment to allow it to sink in more. God is replying to you now. You have sung unto him, you said, I am a friend of you. And he is saying that, yes, you're also my friends. I want you to be my friends, but you have to do everything that I command you. There's a possibility that my relationship with you it's a servant relationship, but I want you to move it further. A servant doesn't know what I'm doing, but my friends, my friends, they know what I'm doing. My friends, they know what I'm doing. I just want you to bow down before God this day, declaring concerning that song, Lord, I am your friend. I am your friend, O oh God. Lord, I want to move from being a servant to being a friend. I want to know what you're doing. Jesus was speaking to the disciples that he does nothing but what he sees the Father doing. Lord, today as I've come into your presence, Father, I don't want to be a distant friend. I want to be a close friend. I don't know whether that is your prayer today. Friends can Turn around everything. Imagine walking around and God is at every moment. You're in constant communion with God. Ah, that is where we want to be. Lord, we thank you, O oh God. Father, we have sung it and we have declared it, O oh God, that we are friends unto you. And you have done the greatest you can do. You say greater love has none than this, than for a man to die for his friends. Thank you, Lord, for that which you have done. Thank you, Lord, for that which you continue to do. Father, we are not going to step out of this place downcast, oh God. Father, we're stepping out, oh God, knowing that we, are, we have friends in high places. Uh, we have friends in the highest of the high places. We have friends where it matters. Father, we thank you and we bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just clap for HOP once more as God is using them to set the tone of the day, preparing us for the spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's just go into the word of God. Today I will just share with you briefly um, on a topic I got saying withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. It tied in very closely with the song we sang. That's why I went ahead to do that prayer. We're about to round in up the eighth month of the year, the last Sunday of, uh, the last Sunday of August 2016. Is anybody excited? 
Okay, a few people are excited. Are there, is there anybody that is keeping up with his plan for the year? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I can hear that loud shout. <laughs> it's just that I can't hear it in the physical. Maybe I can hear <laughs> No, I'm not doing any creepy things, okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord will cause us to finish strong in the name of Jesus Christ. I think God has been bringing to us very powerful words that have been focusing us. And um, just starting from Pastor Kola, I think it's Pastor Kola that came to take us on the, our praise, thanksgiving, who carried us to another level of thanksgiving and praise. And then Pastor Twinde came and told us, well, guys, the way to make it is to work as a team, is to work as a team. Whatever we're going to accomplish, we're going to accomplish much more as we work together as a team. So as you just look, just look to your left, to your right. I, if I look left, okay, right. But I just want you to look at your team members. <laughs> These are your team members. So these ones, I don't know which road you're going to take in heaven. Because I don't know whether there will be Maidenhead and all these Berkshire and all that in heaven. But on that Kingsboro Highway, these are the people you will see in mansions with you. Okay? So you walk with them. Eh? As you hold your hands together with them you'll be chasing thousands in the name of Jesus Christ. And of course, Pastor Shegun carried us to teach us on focus, a message that we have, we're all focused now, right? Praise the Lord. We have removed some things that are not, that's so, eh? <laughs> okay, or you need to go out to UTV again. Praise the Lord. Our minister Chidi carried us through a wonderful teaching also for a coach and some management tips about managing our time. Praise the Lord. If you missed Wednesday, it's not my fault. Uh, praise the Lord. And today I'm going to share briefly on withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. And I mean, I, there's this song, you know, this very popular song that he says, withholding nothing. Lord, I give everything unto you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. That is my ultimate sacrifice unto you. But it so happens that God has also given everything, withholding nothing. Just like the scripture says, say we love him because he first loved us. Yes, we can come and say, yes, Lord, I give everything to me. I give all to you. But he first did it. He first did it. We are only responding to what he has done. According to his divine power, had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had through the knowledge of him who called us to glory and virtue so god has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through his divine power in the nlt version of the same uh, scripture verse 3 he says by his divine power god has given us everything so God has given us everything we need for, for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us his great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desire. He has given us all things that pertain to a life of godliness. So we're talking about withholding nothing, withholding nothing. Lord, I want to serve you withholding nothing. And God is replying us, telling us that he himself, he has given us all things. In Romans chapter 8, 31, Romans 8, 31, I think this is the NLT version I have in my notes. He said, he did not withhold anything. He did not withhold anything. Since he did not spare his own son, verse 32, 8, 32, he says, since he did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, wouldn't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us of whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. So God has given us all things, all things that we need 
to live a life of godliness. One of the things that we want to do is we want to cross in the gap between somebody that has all things and whether we are living a life that displays that we, are, we have all things. And as we go through this message, may the Lord help us to have understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will help us. Let us come to that realization, that joy, that I have everything. I am a friend of God. There's nothing that God needs to give me that he has not given me. But I want to live in that reality. I want to live in that fullness. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So my anchor, my anchor scripture for this uh, short exhortation is taken in the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I hope I copied this one correct. James chapter 1 from verse 3. James chapter 1 verse 3. I'll read from my notes while they are projecting it. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Let's continue, please. So let it grow. From where your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. You will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I don't know how many people you have met. You say, do you need anything? And the person will say, I don't need anything. How many people have you met like that? Eh? Everybody, everybody, nobody. <laughs> you say, do you need every, anything? And the person says, no, I don't need anything. A lot of times the answer would depend on who is asking it. If the person knows that he can get, if he knows, when he, the person sizes you up, and you can't say, please, do you need anything? When the person looks at you up and down, they say, no, I don't need anything. But there's a category of people that will come and say, Oh, you're very welcome. Do you need everything? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need something. But God is saying that there's a state you will reach. You'll be perfect and complete, and you will not need anything. You'll be perfect and complete, and you will not need anything. If you just want to simplify it, I think there are two categories of people that will say they don't need every, anything. The first category of people that don't need anything are people that have everything. If you have everything, then you don't need anything. And then there's the other category of people that don't need anything because they have been able to overcome the desires for those things. So if you have a case of, for example, maybe somebody that is addicted to alcohol, smoking, or whatever, by the time the person overcomes that addiction, by the time you bring that substance to him and say, oh, would you want this substance? He said, no, I don't need it. I don't need it because I have overcome it. Now, as a Christian, it's the two dimensions. We don't need anything for two key reasons. First of all, because God has given us everything. And second of all, those things that are desirous, that are pulling the world, we have the capacity to overcome them. And God will help us as we go through in the name of Jesus Christ. If we read this uh, scripture in context, and I'll read it from the King James, the other one I read I think is, um, is, is from uh, uh, New Living Translation. In the King James, he said, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Now, this is something that will make us to be really strange people. That when you're going through temptation, then you say, oh, this is something of joy. So as, as you know, you're going through these trials and so on, I say, oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm very happy I'm going through this trial. I'm very happy I'm not able to do this and so on and so forth. Count it all joy when you go through diverse trials and temptations. The reason you're counting it all joy is because it is a process that we are going through. There are two forms of temptations as we go through the book of James, we will see. He said, in the first place, in that same chapter, he's talking about, let no man say that it is God that is tempting him. The temptation comes 
from our own desires. And that desire, once we succumb to it, it will give birth to these temptations and trials. So that's one source of temptation we know, that we have these desires and you say, oh yeah, okay, I'm going through this, it's because of God and so on. No, God is carrying us through a process because there are certain things within our life that needs to be washed away. There are certain things that God needs to shave away. And a lot of times these things manifest in marriage relationship. So for you younger ones, it's not to scare you, but marriage relationship brings you into that tension. It brings you into that thing that the man will be saying, I didn't know you were like this. The woman will say, I didn't know you were like this. Because when we are on our own, a lot of us think we are like small superheroes. We are good. We are the nicest people. We are the most unselfish people and so on and so forth. But when you have to share a small space with another person, then you realize that sharing and trying to live together. So we go through those things, and by the time we overcome them, we become better for it. So that is the kind of temptation that comes in from our own selfish desires. But then there's the other type of temptation, which is the more popular one, especially amongst us that like to pray the gym, gym, gym prayer, the other type of temptation. And I want to go through that a little bit with a scripture where Jesus was talking, was talking to, um, to Peter. And this is found in the book of John. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not John. It should be in Luke, Luke 22, I think. Luke 22, verse 31. And the scripture says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, that your faith will not fail. When thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. This is one thing that we go through as Christians, and this is Jesus speaking to Peter now. He says, Satan made a request that he wants to deal with you. Satan made a request. He wants to shake you, sift you as wheat. He wants to shake the barriers and your foundations. But I've prayed for you. As a child of God, there is an intercessor. Jesus is praying for each one of us. And the prayer is this. He's not saying that the temptation should not come. That's not what he said. He said, I pray for you that your faith will not fail you. Your faith will not fail you. Irrespective of the shaking, irrespective of the temptation, the prayer is that, Lord, may my faith not fail me. May I not doubt you, O oh God. May I know that on the other side, I will be victorious. And why God allows it is the victory. By the time you go through it, he says you receive a crown of life. God wants to crown us. And Satan is saying, oh, he thinks he's getting the victory. Even with Jesus, he thought he was getting a victory by going to crucify him. But what happens for the resilient Christian is Satan regrets it. And that's what he did with Jesus. He said, if he had known, he wouldn't have crucified him. If he had known how resilient you are, if he had known how much you stand in faith, then he wouldn't bring that temptation. That is why he said in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 10, uh, do I have it here? 1 <clears throat> Corinthians 10, 13. He said that there is no temptation that has taken you, but such that is common to man. So every temptation, every trial you're going through, there is nothing that is extraordinary about it. It is common to man, but God is faithful. God is faithful. In whatever we're going through, even when it looks so empty, even when it looks like, Lord, I've been calling upon you, oh God. Father, how come? How long is it going to take? 
The scripture is saying that God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above, above that which you are able, but with the temptation will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Today I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that every way of escape that the Lord has provided, your eyes will be open to see it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not take the counterfeit way of escape in the name of Jesus Christ. The, the easy way that the enemy will say, oh no, go this way, you will not take it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be victorious and you will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, he said, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus. There is a trial of faith that we are going through and is likened to being put inside fire. This is scripture. I know sometimes we, we know the nice parts and so on, but he's saying that you're going to go through something that would be like you're going through fire, but it's going to be to the glory of God. He's going to give the strength to go through it. Whom having not seen, you love. In whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. The salvation of your souls. There is an end game. There is, God is raising up a group of resilient people. He's raising up a group of people that are able to withstand every trial and every temptation. He's raising up a people that want nothing of this world, yet they have everything. They have everything, but they are not a slave to anything. That is the people that God is raising up. And that is why sometimes we go through these things. But he's saying it is to the praise and honor of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll just read, um, I jumped this scripture, so I'll just go back to it. It's in James chapter 1, verse 12. This is the NLT version. James chapter 1, verse 12. And he says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those that love him. So God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life which God promised to those who love him. That shall be our portion in Jesus' name. I said that shall be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'll just take a few lessons. I'm just going to take three points, three, three lessons, three lessons from the life of Apostle Paul on, on this wanting nothing. So three lessons. Our, our, our teaching today, we said withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. And what we said is, as children of God, we pour out and sing unto God, Lord, I'm coming unto you withholding nothing. And God is saying also, I am also withholding nothing. So what you're going through, it might look like I've withheld things from you. No, what I'm doing is that I've given you all things, but I'm carrying you through a process that even though you have all things, you're not going to be slave to all things. So, um, like I said, let's take a few lessons from uh, Apostle Paul. And in Philippians chapter 3, very popular scripture we know, Philippians chapter 3, and I'm taking it... Um,
I'm taking it from verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. And he says, I once thought that these things were valuable. I'm reading from the NLT. Today I'm NLT man, so if, in case you didn't notice. He said, I once thought that these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I've discarded everything else, counting them, counting all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. But the key thing I want to bring here is when he puts a comparison between the things he has accomplished, between the things that the world is able to offer and the knowledge of Christ. When he puts them side by side, he says that all these things, they are as dung. All these things, they are like garbage compared to the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Brethren, the practical aspect of this is that we are going to be put in decision, in, in a place of decision, where we have to make a decision that do I pursue those things or do I pursue the excellence of knowing Christ Jesus? And for each of us, it's going to be different. We are not Apostle Paul. Some of us are not full-time missionaries. So some of the things we'll be challenged to do might not be the same as the other. But when the challenge comes, when the challenge comes, our prayer is this, that you say that, Lord, as I seek you, and as I seek your kingdom, every other thing will be added unto me. Lord, you who did not withhold anything, you who gave me all things, you're able to see me through. Lord, I want to move into the realm of the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. I want Christ to be precious unto me. I want him to mean more than any other thing in my life. I pray that that will be your prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. That will be people sold out for God. People who are, who are saying that whatever it takes for the kingdom of God to be established on earth, that is what I would do. And every other thing becomes secondary. Even if I lose this job, even if I lose this contract, the Lord is able to provide for me. The Lord who is the creator of all things, the Lord who owns all things, he's able to give unto me. What I will never do is to compromise. I will never go to, for, the, for, for the wrong way out because I know God is able to see me through. He's able to give me all things. God is my friend. He has called me to be a friend in a relationship that my fruit will last even beyond my own time. That shall be my portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So the first point I put here is that the decision point is when we have to, the, the decision point between the world and the pursuit of God, we will choose rightly like Paul chose. That we choose rightly. When that point of decision comes, when I have to take that quality decision, Lord, I'm going to hang my faith in you. I will hang my faith in you. And I know that you will see me through in the name of Jesus Christ. Another thing that I put as we are talking about wanting nothing. So wanting nothing, putting my full dependence on God. And the second point I'm bringing is learning to walk without condemnation. Learning to walk without condemnation. Because as children of God, sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes we get put down. Lord, this is what I want to do. I want to pray for so many hours. I want to do my Bible study and so on and so forth. And from time to time, I'm not able to keep up my promises. And then that voice comes and says, are you not the one that says, you were singing that song. You say, I give it all to you. I lay down my life for you. 
Lord, you are the potter. Mold me, guide me, lead me. I'm ready to do. I give everything unto you, oh God. And look at you. You cannot even stop yourself from watching that African movie. You wanted to watch the part two. They finished the part one, and it was time to pray, but you still had to watch the part two. You say, look at you. <laughs> See what you have done. Praise the Lord. But God is saying, and that was the struggle that Apostle Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 7. He is struggling. This is what I want to do. But I find something in me, making me to do those things that I don't want to do. Oh, who will save me from this body of sin? And that's why when he came to Romans chapter 8 verse 1, he said, so now. There is now no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. I don't want anything I would reach that stage. Because even when I fail, I, I don't focus on those things on the past but I focus upon the power of God, the spirit of the living God that is able to make me to march forward. Let us not be bogged down by condemnation, which is what the enemy wants. So always is ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of truth. That shall not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. I said that shall not be a portion in the name of Jesus Christ. As he goes on in Romans chapter 8, he's talking about those who are led by the Spirit. They are the sons of God. He said that if we through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the flesh, so it is a plugging in to the Spirit of God. We are in this contention. I think it was mentioned during the Sunday school. Galatians chapter 5. The fight between the flesh and the spirit. So even when the flesh wins sometimes. Oh, you got me yesterday. Tomorrow I will fast. And by the time I'm fasting that movie, I cannot. Uh, I will be able to overcome it. As we go through this battle, I am saying, Lord, by your spirit, empower me. Lord, give me the strength to overcome. Yes, he got me today, but he's not going to get me tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm going to live in that realm of the spirit. I'm going to live, oh God, that that spirit that you gave me, not the spirit of fear, but that spirit that cries out, Abba, Father, that I'm in a loving relationship with you. Lord, this is what I desire. Father, like you said, that your friends know what you're doing. Father, I want my prayer closer to be that place that we have discussion between friends. Father, this is what I desire. This is what I ask for. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, may that be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. God is saying that I'm going to bring you to a place that you will be wanting nothing. You will be wanting nothing. What you want is not what you pull you down. You're not going to be downcast because you don't have this or you don't have this because you have everything. You have God and you have everything. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The last outline I have here, it says, living in the victory zone. Living in the victory zone. And uh, I took the reference for this from Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4, starting from verse 4. I'll skip some few verses. Philippians 4. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Today, our declaration is there will be rejoicing. The rejoicing is in the Lord. The rejoicing is not in the circumstance. It is in the Lord who holds the victor's crown. It is in the Lord who has never lost a battle. It is in the Lord whose testimony is yea and amen. It is in the Lord who will not make me to be an exception. It is in the Lord who ensures that my enemies will not overcome me. Lord, I rejoice in you. Rejoice in the Lord 
He said, rejoice always. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. He said, be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing. Do not leave this place worried about anything. He said, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request be known unto God. It is not an issue of the worrying. He said it's not about waking up early and eating the breads of sorrow. It is about the Lord making the building. It is about the Lord making the building. He said with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests made known unto God. And the, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. I am praying for that peace of God. It is a kind of, it, it, it is, he said, like the mountains surround Jerusalem, so is the Lord round about those that love him. He said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, they run into it and they are safe. There is a place in God where peace will surround. He said, the peace of God that passeth all understanding, it cannot be understood on ordinary terms because it is something that is happening in the spirit realm where your mind will be fluttering back and forth. The peace of God. The peace of God. I speak the peace of God upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. When Peter was walking on the water, he was looking onto Jesus. There were distractions. We refer to them as we were taught legitimate distractions. But he kept on looking onto Jesus. He said, yes, it is stormy. And when you want to go out in the storm, you have to make sure you're dressed right for it and so on and so forth. So we're not going to be careless, but he's still looking on to Jesus. But as soon as he takes his eyes off from, the, from Jesus into the legitimate distraction, what happens? That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. God. Jesus, I look unto you. You are the captain of my soul. Here he comes riding on a horse, holding the hand of victory. He is holding that sword of victory. What is that storm that wants to challenge? Ha, ah, there is no storm. The disciples were asking, they said, what manner of man is this that he speaks even to the storms? That is why today I'm praying in the name of Jesus that as many as have come into this place, with anything that represents storm, by the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that you have come to Mount Zion. I declare that you have come to that place where there is deliverance. I declare in the name of Jesus that he who is able to control the hearts of kings, they will be controlled for your good in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Because at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. That everything that is representing a storm, they must bow to the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is a sickness, it must disappear. In the name of Jesus Christ. As many as are troubling you, the Lord will arise with vengeance and pursue them down. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you have put your hand on the plow. Because you believe in the almighty God. Because your faith is not shaken by the trials you are going through. The Lord will see you through. The Lord will cause you to be perfected. The Lord will cause you to be complete in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray as we step out, we're stepping out in victory. Amen. We're stepping out in that level that God wants us to reach. Like Paul was saying, I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. These trials I'm going through, they are training me that I become a resident soldier 
in the hands of the almighty God. And nothing can shake me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I just want you to bow down in the presence of the almighty God. There is no challenge. There is no challenge. He said he will never allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. He said, Peter, Simon, Simon. Satan asked that he wants to sift you, but I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. The Lord God Almighty reigns forevermore. He said he has exalted his name, his word above his name. Whatever he has said will surely come to pass. He is declaring that he is more than enough for you. He has everything. Whatever has stood as a barrier, as a delay, even as you develop the endurance and the patience, you'll be complete in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that whatever it is that you need to overcome, receive the strength of God to overcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, because we are the sheep of your pasture. Father, by strength shall no man prevail. It is by your spirit. It is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Lord, because you have come to set the captives free, whatever represents a form of captivity or gates, Lord, they are pulled down today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, your people shall step forth in victory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, for the assignments that are, are before us, we receive the faith to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. The faith to be true witnesses unto you. Lord, we receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit, oh God, to go out forth and bear good fruit. Father, we receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, today we step out, oh God, being perfect and complete. Wanting nothing, wanting nothing, and withholding nothing. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, make sure you add us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit the church website.